We may not have a normalization deal, but Israeli drivers travel to Saudi Arabia to take part in this week's Dakar car rally. Despite a ban on Israeli travelers to the kingdom, the Israelis were listed as representing Belgium and didn't wear any identifying Israeli symbols. However, some members of their team entered the country on their Israeli passports, and Saudi officials were allegedly aware they were inside of the country. The team was sponsored by MyHeritage, an Israeli online genealogy and DNA testing company. And although they finished in 29th and 17th place in the competition, here is a rare sighting of an Israeli athlete speaking Hebrew in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Okay, let's speak to Dr. Narit Ophir, who is an expert in golf studies and one of the organizers of this collaboration. Hi, thank you so much for joining us, Narit. Hello, good evening. So how exactly did this come to be? What was involved and how difficult was it? First of all, um, thank you for my heritage for the un unbelievable opportunity for all what it did, because without my heritage, it couldn't be like um, kind of dream that became true. And the beginning was actually a year and a half ago where, when we started to talk about it and discuss the, the way was really, really long because, first of all, uh, we needed someone to be a sponsor uh, for this very expensive, not easy journey um, to rally the Casa Saudia. And uh, my heritage, heritage actually gave us the opportunity to do so. After that, we had another issues um, with visas and to get all the agreements and, you know, approvals for uh, participating in the competition. After that, we came to uh, KSA Saudi Arabia and started the, this journey. But my, my actually um, involvement was uh, two years ago when Tzavet Perl, Perl team, my heritage, came to me and together we, we participated in Rally Abu Dhabi. It was in 2018. And this is how actually I met these people, these wonderful people. So, of course, you have experience being in an Arab country that we don't have relations with, as you were uh, in Abu Dhabi for that competition that you mentioned. Now, when you're in Saudi Arabia, which we currently don't have a diplomatic relations with, with a group of Israelis, how did you feel when you were there? Were you able to speak Hebrew? Was anyone wearing sort of Jewish symbols? What was that like? We spoke in Hebrew. Nobody told us not to do so, of course. But I would like to mention something really, really important, because if... You know, the guests, the Saudis, and also um, the people who were charged on uh, Rally the Casa Saudia um, didn't give us this opportunity. And the guests are so beautifully and kindly. So everything was really smooth. Like, uh, we didn't even feel that something is going on, uh, you know, unusual, like unique. We were part of team who actually participated, and this is, was the most important issue. And do you have any future collaborations planned with Saudi Arabia? Of course. Inshallah, Kariban. <laughs> Can you give us some insight into what so. that is? Um, yes. I travel a lot around the Middle East and the, and the Gulf, of course, um, as a research fellow at uh, Bailan University. And in the last six, seven years, I, I visit and I divide my life between the Gulf with, between the Gulf countries and Israel, uh, which is, for me, it's not so unique to go and travel around. Um, and in the hope that all the people in Israel really, really soon, around a year and a half, something like that, will participate, you know, and uh, we will get the opportunity to go and make the journeys that as we did. Okay, really quickly, if Israel does eventually have um, some kind of normalization deal with Saudi Arabia, what do you recommend for Israelis to go see in Saudi Arabia? Just to think with open mind, I found Saudi Arabia very, very different than what we hear in the news and media. For example, if we, if we concentrate in Jeddah, for example, I didn't find any problem to go, you know, uh, with T-shirt and with my heritage 
sign, uh, signatures and everything. And not only a via and covered, like if we're talking about women, for example, this is really unique and different than what we, we hear during the years. Everything is changing. I see that the normalization is not only between nations, but also there are some very interesting uh, processes inside the countries, inside the Gulf countries, around the Middle East that we are not aware about. Some really interesting developments. Nareet, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you very much.